Welcome to News Click. Yesterday, on the occasion of Independence Day, 73rd Independence Day, Prime Minister of India Narendra Modi made an in principle, gave an in principle approval to Chief of Defence Staff. Now, this is for the first time in two decades that this issue has been uh, first. Uh, was mooted by the Kargil Review Committee and subsequently by other committees that were set up by the Government of India from time to time, including uh, one led by the Minister of State for Defence, Arun Singh, followed by a group of ministers, which was chaired by uh, Deputy Prime Minister L.K. Adwani, who was then the Deputy Prime Minister. And after that, there have been two other committees, one by Naresh Chandra Committee, which was uh, submitted its report in December 2012, followed by D.B. Shet, uh, Lieutenant General D.B. Shet, uh, Shet Katkar Committee, which gave its report in December 2016. All of them had been pushing for uh, Chief of Dem uh, Defence Staff. Today we have with us Air Vice Marshal Kapil Kak uh, to uh, to explain to us and to take us through the various stages through which this CDS concept has, has passed by and why it has taken so long for the government to agree to it and some of the intricacies that are connected with it. Welcome to News Click, sir. Thank uh, you. I'm so delighted to be at News Click. Sir, so let me start. Prime Minister made an in principle uh, announcement yesterday about setting up of a chief of defense staff, where the modalities and other def details have still to be worked out. Now, how do you, as a former uh, Air Vice, Vice Marshal of Indian Air Force, how do you look at it? I'd say in Persian, derized, durustized. Uh, it's been a long while, as you said in the introductory remarks, I'll take you back even longer. Uh, the proposal was mooted after the 1971 war uh, that uh, the concept of the chairman of the chiefs of staff committee, which is a rotatory appointment between the three chiefs of the Army, Navy mm. and the Air Force, mm. must be replaced by a full-time chief of defense staff. Mm. General Manikshaw was so recommended. Uh, but as, uh, as is said lightheartedly, two lals put it down. One was K.B. Lal, the Defence Secretary, the other was Air Chief Marshal P.C. Lal, one of the finest mm -hmm. uh, soldiers, sailors, airmen this country has ever produced. Uh, so, um, we then have 1990 Arun Singh Committee report on higher defence and cost cutting and everything else, which also made a recommendation to the effect that we should have a Chief of Defence staff. Mm -hmm. Then there was a silence. I think the governments were not... Uh, resonating enough to the proposal that were put forward. Uh, but it required the Kargil War and uh, the post-Kargil War, a committee formed under Mr. K. Subramaniam, uh, or the doyen of um, uh, defense and uh, other elements of strategy, who recommended that, uh, identified the weakness, the committee identified the weaknesses and recommended that there should be a uh, Chief of Defence Staff. Uh, now, what would the Chief of Defence Staff do? What would be the nature of this animal? Mm. Uh, clearly, one more uh, uh, committee was formed, and this was at the political level, mm. led by then uh, Deputy Prime Minister, Mr. L.K. Advani. Mm. That group also deliberated on the Kargil Review Committee, mm. and then f the group of ministers said, now we have clarity. The group of ministers said that there will be, uh, should be uh, a chief of defense staff. Mm. He should be a single point military advisor on behalf of the three chiefs to the government. Two, he should administer the nuclear forces, which needed the to strategic be. command. Yes. yes. Uh, the strategic command hadn't been formed then. Okay. Okay. So that time it was only a question of nuclear forces. And then recommended uh, uh, the formation or establishment of a strategic forces command 
as also an Andaman Nicobar command, which were joint commands. So, uh, as you self explained thereafter, we had Shachakhtar committee in 2016. Uh, before that, that was a purely army level committee, but before that, we had a, 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 a semi political come executive committee under a uh, under a very renowned uh, um, uh, civil service officer who accomplished so much in his long service, Mr. Naresh Chandra. And he um, was given a large group of people, included former diplomats, academia, scientists, technologists, former chiefs of the three services. So it was a very well-balanced group of people who met under a statesman like individual like Naresh Chandra, I had the pleasure to know him personally for decades, and they gave to the government a proposal for a chief of defense staff uh, in the way of the nomenclature was permanent chairman, chiefs of staff committee. I think they went wrong there. They could as well name him chief of defense staff. Mm. They said there should be a permanent chief of chairman, chief, uh, chiefs of staff committee, a fourth chief who will be primus inter pares, which means he will he will be same, at the rank, same as ra rank would be same, level would be same. And what is more important that they would be, they propose that there should be three very, very new commands set up, Space Command, Cyber Command, and Special Forces Command. Now, uh, the sad part is the Prime Minister has given an impression that this is a de novo, uh, you know, it has not been attempted before. I explain this detail only to say, it is not the Prime Minister's fault or this government's fault. Governments over many, many years, and I started with 1990, yes. uh, Arun Singh Committee, uh, we are talking about 29 years. So it has taken 29 years for us to... Prime Minister deserves kudos for having at least now announced. But all that he needed was to say this will be the CDS, the PAC. And, uh, I mean, at the PM's level, it can be done in macro terms. But he's again now gone back to, we will have a committee, which will now look at the role, the missions, and the and individuals, defined, and yeah. define the... I mean, it's all there with the government over so can many I, years. Can I interject here, sir? Yeah. Now, the reason why the first government, after transfer of power in 1947, they were keen on keeping civilian control over defense. As a result, it was the Secretary of Defense who was given the task of the responsibility for preparing for India's defense, including obviously therefore the military preparations. Now we are moving in a direction where the CDS, many of the roles, uh, many of the responsibilities which today rest with the Secretary of Defense would shift to the CDS. Or oh, there is speculation along those lines. That's, how, not, how, that's not. That's not visualized uh, because the uh, conduct of business rules of the government of India uh, are like the Bible for running India. Mm -hmm. Unless we amend those conduct of business okay. rules, uh, no game-changing kind of you know transformations are permissible. That's mm -hmm. the first one. The second point you made is very, very valid, Gautam, because there was fear in the minds of the politici politicians. Mm. Jawaharlal Nehru was against the concept of a chief of defense staff. Okay. He was against the concept of giving military too much power in decision making. Right or wrong, history will judge him. But the most important was the fact that countries around us were then under coming increasingly under army rule yes. and therefore the sphere of the coup. But I think we've reached such a stage as a great power that we have come to this stage. India Construct is a favorite construct world over. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, as to how diverse societies can function democratically, mm -hmm. be part of uh, the global system. In fact, not just be uh, what was earlier used as stabilizers, but leading powers to transform uh, the global system to see that there is equity and balance yes. and we don't have uh, problems that occurred before. Uh, so to that extent, uh, this is a, a right way to go. 
the question is, uh, what will the chief of staff do? And that is, I think, uh, our viewers need yes. to know this. Kya karenge ye? Kya, what is the role for them? Uh, number one is uh, uh, single point advice. Why uh, one has, I personally have mm. doubts on single point advice uh, because he is not going to be commanding any forces. Yes. As visualized by all these committees which I have okay. enumerated yeah, yeah, and yeah, you yeah, also yeah, included, yeah. he will be a single point advisor to the government on behalf of the three chiefs. I want to know why do you need a uh, I mean, if three chiefs can talk to the, uh, the PM mm -hmm. or the Cabinet Committee on Security together, why do you need one person to act as an interlocutor? Mm -hmm. So I also have problems in a very complex, fragile, volatile world. Uh, multiple inputs to policy are very, very crucial. Mm -hmm. Why do we have a Cabinet Committee of Security? Why? That's the question linked to it. So I'm afraid I have, I'm, I'm not with the concept of single point advice. Well, one of the arguments is that this will bring in some very necessary uh, cost efficiency, reduce duplication. For instance, we have 17 single service commands of which Army and Air Force have seven each and our Navy has about three. And there are two joint commands. One is the Andaman Nicobar and the other is the Strategic Command. Now, it's said that the single service command is something where there might be some, there is some scope for cutting down on duplication. That is one area. The other is also it is suggested that this will bring in uh, a joint operational and joint command, joint doctrine, etc., etc., which is today lacking. How do you respond to that? Um, I, I think let me first clarify. Uh, we need to differentiate between CDS and command. CDS is not a commander. He's a staff officer. Okay. He may have command of some forces, uh, like the strategic uh, forces command. Uh, what other forces will come under him? For example, Andaman Nicobar command mm -hmm. could come under him. Now, does he, be, he will only be a commander in chief when it comes through, I don't know the details, of these joint forces. So essentially, he's, he's viewed as a joint forces advisor, come commander, come staff officer. Mm -hmm. A regular forces of the three services, the Army, Navy and Air Force, will be commanded by their respective chiefs. Yes. There is no change visualized in any of the committees. Which Either are, for military operation or for administrative no, reasons. Military operation, not at all. Correct. Okay. Because if you let me talk, I have spent 40 years in the Air Force. The Air Force today in the world, look at 30 years of conflicts, mm. all driven by the Air Force, all done by the Air Force some independently by the Air Force. Kosovo, for example, mm. was an independent Air Force mm. operation. Balakot. Mm. Balakot was an independent Air Force. It may be, have been a small operation. This is because these are fast, quick forces uh, which have penetration, which have speed, which have persistence, and uh, which have the capability to deliver political and strategic effect at the fastest time. But That's sir, what the politician wants. Sir, one of the arguments that is being advanced by many of the veterans, not necessarily from the Air Force, but from the Army and the Navy, is that uh, quite apart from the reduction in the number of uh, single service commands, uh, which they have themselves talked about, there is also this question that the Air Force was the, the most reluctant of the force to go in for this CDS. Uh, but now that the Air Force has been made to cede uh, a lot of ground, for instance, to the Navy for their maritime reconnaissance, or to the Air Force, uh, to the Indian Army, where helicopter gunships are concerned, and several other areas, uh, do you think that Air Force reluctance, which was 
keeping in mind the, the significance and the role that the Air Force has increasingly come to play in modern warfare. Uh, don't jive too well or you think that this has been overcome or it can be overcome? I know, I, I think uh, the article that you are referring to is by a very close friend. Unfortunately, it's factually incorrect. Okay. Extremely close friend of mine. So I don't want, I'm not here yeah, going okay. to defy or uh, agree with him. Uh, what is seeding ground? I want to understand this concept. Are we in the battle for ground between the three services? If we are aiming to be working together, hmm. what does this expression do? Hmm. Therefore, you cede ground to me and then therefore you are jointly yes. with me. This is what the Air Force has always had reservations on. That's the first point. The second point, much more importantly, is the fact, the article also talks about Jawaharlal Nehru. Yes. I mean, this is a very favorite uh, flavor of the season. Bring in Jawaharlal Nehru. Your panchayat is not yes. your panchayat is not working. But you know Nehru, he's dead 55 years ago. Was this nation sleeping? <laughs> and this is a strategic analyst who is talking about it. It had no relevance. Business of yes, elements of the air force have got been uh, devolved to the army and the navy like attack helicopters to a certain extent, utility helicopters to an extent. Mm -hmm. Likewise with the Navy, the reconnaissance is with the Navy. So it is not seeding ground. It is a very careful consideration of the fact that some elements of air power can. But our resources in air power today are so limited in comparison to the challenges we face that this concept of theater command will never be acceptable to the Air Force. Our problem is, and this is not the, the writer in question, but the nation, uh, the entire nation, they are so mixed up. CDS is something else and theater command is something else. Something. What is CDS from other Air Force? We say that we must have a CDS because advanced countries have. In advanced countries like the United States, they have theater commands because they have commitments globally. We can barely manage our own challenges, internal and external, which are close to our doors. We are not going to have operations in Fiji. And when do we have? We have produced the capability to do this. We sent Canberra's to Congo in 1960. Offensive combat aircraft in Fiji, in Congo. So that's the, that's the Nehru. And Nehru himself signed that document. Yes, we must send it to, a, to the assistance of our friendly country in Africa. So I hope uh, the viewers will, yeah. will get what I'm trying to say, Nehru versus the rest. Now the point about theater command is a very, very long way off. Let's get the CDS. As far as the CDS is concerned, I would like to inform the viewers that the Naresh Chandra Committee report was unanimously agreed by all three chiefs. So the Air Force has no reservations. Okay. What is sought to be done, neither, neither Prime Minister Narendra Modi nor recent announcements by the government are talking about theater command. These are elements within the armed forces who are finding themselves out in, um, um, on a um, uh, block in, in terms of what they can do because the war has become air war. This reconciliation process is a tough one. So it is like when the nuclear forces came in, the conventional army said, what will we do now? And um, if you remember, uh, there was a book named Absolute Weapon, to published immediately after mm -hmm. the Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And you know what he said, the writer said that until now, the role of the armed forces was to win wars. Now onwards, their role will be to prevent wars. So when I speak to my young officer, he says, I have joined to fight a war. And we know that there are people who came into the armed forces, retired from the armed forces without fighting a war. 30 years of service. Don't forget the last war was in 71. Great. We are talking about uh, nearly 48 years. Nearly 48 years of... Kargil was not a war. But we can't include Barakot as a war or for that matter, the surgical strike. When you talk about war fighting today, yes, you rightly said, Gautam, it's a very complex techno 
operational uh, kind of a mm. management of force. But application of force today has undergone huge psychological and emotional changes. One is destructibility of the weapons that we mm -hmm. use. They can play havoc. You know, one petroleum refinery, which is perhaps one fourth of the entire production of India, can be knocked out by four precision guided weapons. So that's why it's more prevention than actual offensive. Secondly, society's appetite for war also gets to reduce. We may be as a society still muscular and hard, but you see European society and US. Why is Trump insistent on getting his Afga troops from Afghanistan? Why is he becoming more and more internal? Because the people do not want American forces to go out. We will come to that stage one day. So I think uh, other than the jumlas, which India is very famous for, we need to very carefully uh, reflect, analyze what are our challenges, where, what are the requirements which will necessitate our using force for a certain purpose, and what would that political strategic purpose be in relation to time lines, in relation to resources employed, uh, employed, uh, the third is, what is the nature of that war? To me, it will be a high-intense war for a limited period and therefore in the genre of limited wars. 71 war was the last conventional war we'll fight. So to that extent, CDS is important. Mm -hmm. The point you have raised. He will be able to prioritize budgeting if that charter is given to him. But it is all within the armed forces. Uh, the civil servants and the politicians will be very astute not to give away any power of theirs to the armed forces. So, the, the, you know, these guys are not, the typical attitude is, these guys are not getting along with each other. Okay, let's have a CDS. He will sort out these fights. But don't forget, the CDS, for giving that single point advice, has to confirm before he gives his advice that this is in consultation with his other... All three colleagues of his. So, I, you know, it's a very complex game. Now, each and the other chiefs will have within this system full authority to, to tell the CDS, who may be their boss, that I have a different view, I need to be heard at a higher level than yours. So, you're back again to this. So, I, I don't think that we're talking about a panacea. It's a good, okay. I, I recommend, yes. We have been talking about it. So let's see how it works. As far as the theater commands is concerned, um, as an airman, as somebody who took part in 65 and 71 war, and I know what combat mm -hmm. operations are all about. I did bombing in both the western and the eastern sector in that war. Mm. Uh, it's, uh, you know, uh, when you talk about air power, you will never have adequate air power to meet the requirements of the theater commands that you will create for that purpose. Whether they have three or four, as you said, 17 commands, mm. factually right. Mm. But what is, I mean, what are we talking about? Tables and chairs and rooms and offices. Command structure is what? The same people will get redeployed somewhere else. But the right. question is, the person who knows best to employ the army is the army chief. Air chief cannot tell him how to run his army. The naval chief cannot tell the army chief and the air force chief how to run their services. Likewise, the two cannot tell the naval chief how to uh, sail at sea. These are, and this article talks about the very insular and working in silos. They have to work in silos. They are specialists. What is the common link between a Sukhoi 30 pilot and a Jawan? They have to be insular because Jawan has a job. Sukhoi 30 pilot is a job. So we have to recognize, to sum it up in two mm -hmm. lines, we have to recognize the services have to fight wars in the specialized genre of their capabilities. Mm -hmm. It is for the fourth person who is ostensibly the CDS to have the experience to be able to say which element will fight which war and therefore prepare the joint plan and have it approved at the political level. That's the first point. The second point is theater commands for India are a long way off. We have waited 29 years and more to get the CDS, CDS. through. Let us wait another 10 years after the CDS is 
worked on the ground mm. and look at that. Third is the question that is raised most speculatively. Now the CDS will do budgeting, he'll distribute this. This is purely the prerogative of the civil service. Civil service allocation of funds will be that of. Where that funds will be uh, done in terms of whether it will be aircraft or ships or cyber or space, there may be a discussion within the Chiefs of Staff Committee that will still operate. And the Chief of Defence Staff who will be heading that headquarters, which exists incidentally, mm. there's, a, uh, there's a Chairman Chiefs of Staff Committee under whom you have the advisor to the Chairman Chiefs of Staff Committee, who is a three-star, all that will happen is he'll now be a four-star and he'll be independent, Prime Minister Paris, although the media speculation is that he will be senior to these people. Uh, who will the chiefs be? It's received enough attention in the yes. media, I don't want to comment on it, that it's been postponed, to ne that the committee has been given time till November, ensures that one uh, yes. chief goes away, then there's only one chief left and you promote him, he's the senior most of the other three, uh, um, the um, a chief having gone away, uh, then we have, uh, you know, uh, it's Hollywood and uh, <laughs> everything else. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, this is all for today from NewsClick. But we'd like to have you with us again and again to take us through many of these issues that keep on cropping up. But thank you once again for today. Uh, if you have any comment, any feedback, do get back to us. Keep watching NewsClick and thank you for today. Thank <laughs> you.